Alola everyone, it's the Munch and welcome back to Pokemon Sun and Moon. Last episode, we made it here to the final area in the Alola region, the Pony Plains, in the hopes of getting to the Battle Tree, which is our final battling challenge here in Alola. A lot of tough trainers gather there and I want to make it there and take them all on. Now that we're champion of Alola, we've got to prove that we can be the champion of the world. So today, we're going to be heading out through the rest of the Pony Plains here and hopefully making it to that Battle Tree. So if you guys are excited, make sure to hit that like button and show your support for the series and the channel and we're getting right to it we're already riding on Tauros smashing up the rocks and we have got a star piece now there's actually one more area that we still haven't explored here called the pony gauntlet and apparently the toughest trainers in the entire Alola region are found there so I am pretty excited actually for this episode and we're gonna start off by whoa what the okay I thought we were battling that hiker but apparently we ran into a wild Pokemon instead and it is gonna be Tauros Oh snap, we avoided the Zen Headbutt, and I figured we might as well take on this Tauros because these wild Pokemon are such high level that they will probably give our Pokemon really good experience. That's actually, I've been trying to trade up because I feel like right now we're not quite ready to take on the Battle Tree, even though levels don't really matter too much there. But we get 53, and that's more stats. And, oh, Ronda level 58 as well, and Kurama 59. Holy crap, everybody's gaining levels today. Okay, I actually did not realize, but apparently in the entire last episode, I didn't have the EXP share turned on. I really thought I did. That's why I added Grimace back to the party to train him up. But not much training is going to get done if you don't have the EXP share. I don't know how that hiker didn't see us there, but I've assembled my team members from Pokemon this spring from the mountains. That's pretty cool, man. We are in quite a mountainy area right now, so it would make sense for this guy to have some of those kinds of Pokemon. So let's see what hiker Ryan has got for us, as he's actually only got two Pokemon. But the first one is going to be Lycanroc, midday form, and I'm expecting maybe the second one is going to be a Mudsdale, but I'm not really sure. That's just going to be my prediction for right now. Thankfully, Lycanroc doesn't have Sturdy or anything that can really help it survive a Sky Uppercut, so we are totally going to go for that right off the bat. Uh, but yeah, the Battle Tree, I don't think gaining any more levels will help us out too much because I think it sets you to level 50 no matter what. I might be wrong, but I think that's what it does. Either way, the Lycanroc definitely goes down. No problemo there. And we're probably going to be gaining a couple more levels here. Yep, Grimace, level 30 and level 31 as well. Okay then. And this guy's next Pokemon is actually going to be a Gigalith. I thought it would be, uh, you know, Mudsdale, because I think Mudsdale is found around this area, but this thing does actually have the Sturdy, so even though it might survive this hit here, wow, it's actually going to survive with a lot more than 1 HP, and go for the Sandstorm. Alright, well, you have just sealed your doom, Gigalith. I had no part in this. You sealed your own doom, buddy, by going for that Sandstorm there, because now one more Sky Uppercut will definitely finish him off. And I don't know what this guy was thinking. Hiker Ryan, you got some pretty cool mountain Pokemon, but you're not really using them to their full potential, buddy. Maybe you could learn a thing or two from, uh, well, not really me. I don't really use that many mountain-y Pokemon either. But what the heck? Another Dark-type move for our Alolan Grimer there. And I don't know how, like I said, I didn't notice that the EXP sure wasn't on, but all throughout the last episode, Grimace gained no experience. At least this time around, we're definitely going to be gaining some levels and maybe even getting an Alolan Muck at the end of this episode because that's pretty much the whole reason why we're training up Grimace. I'm trying to complete that dex and get all of the Alolan forms that we can get. Uh, I think we're pretty close, actually. Aside from the version exclusives ones, I've got almost every Alolan form now. But uh, over here, it's actually going to be a TM. And finally, 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 we find Thunderbolt. Awesome stuff there. Not like we really need it anymore because our Alolan Raichu kind of already learned it on his own. But, you know, it's cool to have it either way. And I think that's actually it for that little mountain area up there to the north. But there is definitely a berry tree and a wild Pokemon, which is Firo. I keep wanting to show you guys the awesome Pokemon that you can find in these areas. But apparently every single time we run into the same stuff, Firos and Crab Brawlers. Well, not really Crab Brawler too often, but that's what we're about to run into here. Speaking of which, I still need to take my Crab Brawler over to uh, the mountain with the Pokemon League and try to evolve that for sure, but I guess we'll do that next episode, like after we get done with this Pony Island business, because there is a lot to do still here, a lot of trainers to battle, and I think uh, actually that hiker there might not have been the last one, because there's definitely a girl somewhere at the uh, entrance of this place that wants to battle us once we've taken on every other trainer, so I believe the last one we can find is all the way across this grassy patch, but... Of course, I run into another wild Pokemon, 
and it's a Trumbeak. Seriously, there's a lot of cool Pokemon here. Whoa, I don't know how we narrowly avoided that one, by the way. But uh, before we go take on that final trainer that you guys saw there, let's go pick up this item which is just an X defense not really too great but yeah there's a lot of really cool wild Pokemon here and for some reason I just keep getting unlucky and running into the same ones uh, but I believe off screen I found a Mudsdale by the Rocky area let's finally head over to this trainer here I was a rising star who spent all my time in battle and now I'm a veteran well I guess that's how things go from rising star to veteran to uh, staying a veteran forever I mean this guy is clearly pretty old here and he's still just a lowly veteran could never quite make it to be the champion of Alola like us. I mean, I'm 10 years old and we're already somehow the champion of Alola. What have you done with your life, Mr. Veteran? I guess he caught himself as Skarmory and that's not really something that Sarah can do much to, so... Let's bring out the Puka here and take on that Metal Sound. I think that just lowers special defense, right? Yep. Pretty much like a Screech, but for special defense. Kind of a weird attack, but doesn't matter because we should be able to take it down with one Thunderbolt here. Except actually this thing, oh, wow, it doesn't have Sturdy. That's a little bit strange to see. Usually Skarmory has Sturdy, but that one did not. And that means he goes down quite easily. Grimace with more levels. I mean, Grimace is going to be gaining a lot of levels now that the uh, EXP share is actually on. Again, I can't believe that it wasn't on throughout the entire last episode because it felt like it was, but it certainly wasn't because nobody was really gaining experience. Otherwise, Grimace would probably be like level 40 already, but let's take down this Vickable here. Actually, the first time we're seeing this Pokemon, but it is the evolution of Chargebug, and it's very slow, even slower than El Tigre somehow, so it is going to go down quite easily there. Always got to remember that recoil damage though. Man, Flare Blitz is powerful, but that recoil damage certainly hurts us. And we're going to gain a couple more levels. I think that, yep, this guy does have one more Pokemon. It's going to be Gyarados, so nothing really too bad. Puka can definitely come out and finish that off. I think Puka's already, yeah, almost at level 61. It's crazy that he was already our first Pokemon to hit 60, and now he's already going to hit 61, but... Then again, maybe it's all because that EXP share wasn't on, so he was gaining all of the experience from the battles last episode. Uh, I think Puka was definitely one of our most used Pokemon here in the postgame so far, just because he's one of our fastest Pokemon, and man, speed has been really important lately. But there we go, like I said, the level 61, and uh, maybe Grimace will gain a level here too. Probably gonna gain one. El Tigre gets one. And there's the Grimace level. Nice. Veteran Leon, you're done, bruh. The path of Pokemon runs steep. And you've run dry out of battle. I don't know what that was supposed to mean, but I was just trying to say that the guy really wasn't too tough for being a veteran. From rising star to veteran, you think, man, you think he's got some experience under his belt, but he's no ace trainer. And speaking of ace trainers, there was actually an ace trainer all the way back at the entrance of this Pony Plains that would like to challenge us only after we beat all the other trainers. But of course, another wild Pokemon is going to run into us. I feel like I don't even have to tell you guys at this point that that was indeed a Gumshoes, uh, but that little spot there, you can sometimes get Braviary, which is a pretty cool Pokemon. Uh, you can find Hypno here in this patch of grass, and then these Shaking Bushes right here uh, sometimes have Emolga or Scyther, so definitely try to get all of those Pokemon here, fill up that Dex, but I believe this guy here looks like you managed to claw your way up to the number two spot, huh? Then I guess you've earned a little rendezvous with the number one trainer, me. Let's do it. Let's battle this guy. The full power of the number one trainer is going to finish you off for the day. I don't know about this, dude. I think I'm about to become the number one trainer here on Pony Plains right before we move on to the Pony Gauntlet. I don't even know how this guy got on such a high horse. Like, seriously, just over the hill we were just at with that veteran, there are going to be a whole bunch of tough trainers to battle. Definitely tougher than this kid and his Drompa, so I don't know where he got idea that he's the second best trainer on Pony. You're kind of standing in front of the champion right now, bro, but I don't know. It's like 50-50 so far. Some... Some people recognize us being the champion, being super powerful, and then there's kids like this guy who think, you know, the champion of Alola can't be all that tough. He can't possibly predict that my Drampa is a dragon type and switch out to a fairy type. It's just not possible. So anyway, let's go for the Ice Beam here, and Drampa, actually a little bit tankier than I thought. Uh, the last Drampa that we battled went down pretty quickly to an Ice Beam, so I was suspecting this one might also go down that quick, but... Not really. Now that it threw up a light screen, it's probably not even going to die from another Ice Beam here. Uh, nope. Little bit too tanky for me. But do you even have anything for us, Trompa? Like, for real? Is this even going to hurt? Okay, actually, that did hurt a little bit. Uh, Trompa the Magic Dragon here. Snoop Dragon. <laughs> a little bit tougher than I expected, but still going to go down at the end of the day. 
And this Ace Trainer has only got one more Pokemon, so the number one trainer in the Pony Plains, man. I don't know what's going on, but you're not really showing off that power that I was hoping for. His next Pokemon, though, is going to be a Gudra. And that is definitely an awesome Dragon type there, but I've got a Rude Awakening for it. The Sub-Zero Slammer. I'm actually really curious if this is going to take it down in one hit because Gudra is pretty tanky, but the Z-Power is just something completely else. So here we go with the Sub-Zero Slammer. I just don't really like using Z-Moves that often because the animation takes so long. But at the same time, it's such an awesome animation. Just, oh, amazing right there. And as I said, guys, Gudra is pretty dang tanky. So yeah, after all of that animation, we don't even get to do a quarter damage to it. And here comes the Muddy Water, almost gonna kill us. It's just so weird, man. I put so much work into that Z-Move. Oh gosh, I clicked the wrong attack. Well, that's not good. That means that Kurama will most likely go down here. And Gudra is not even at half health. Either way, I think he's going to go for another Muddy Water here, so... It might make sense to switch out to Sarah after Kurama tanks out 1 HP survival there. Our Pokemon just keep on surviving with 1 HP though, so at this point it's not even like that surprising to me. But, here we go for the Dragon Claw. And oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. This guy has actually got the Z power. No way. Is this actually the- Oh my gosh. The devastating Drake. You've got to be kidding me, dude. Why do you have this? Oh my. Okay. Well, Sarah. <laughs> still going to survive with one HP. Wow. I don't know. Like I said, at this point, it's like not even surprising. But I will admit that one was a little bit more surprising because it was a Z move. And we somehow still survived the Z power. Like, that is insane. Sarah, you are awesome. Kurama, you are just as awesome. And that is it, guys. We have taken down Ace Trainer. What's his name? Oh, we're learning Screech right now. That might not be too bad. I mean, I don't really like Minimize or Screech, but might as well, you know. We're training up Grimace here, so we got to give him as much love as we can. Run, run, run away. This is no rendezvous. I wonder if we get anything from beating that guy, though. Oh, baby, I've got to give you a hand. You are worthy of being the next number one. So here you go, babe. A little present from me. All right, dude, chill out with the babes there. But we're going to get TM60 for Quash. I'm actually not sure what that does, but there aren't too many trainers who've mastered using their Z powers. So don't forget, I'm the one of those special few. Please, baby. Okay, baby, just chill out with the babies and maybe I'll consider it. But... Now that we took that guy down, we can finally move on to the Pony Gauntlet. By the way, the uh, Pony Meadow is here. We explored that last episode, so definitely check that out if you missed it. I uh, want to see that area, but we're going to be moving along, like I said, over to this place, the Pony Coast, actually. Before we get to the Pony Gauntlet, I guess there's still one more area to explore here. And whoa, another Poke Finder spot. I keep finding these spots, but I can just never get good pictures. <gasps> This time around, though, we get a Beware. That's a pretty awesome Pokemon. Except it's, once again, not facing the right direction. Come on, Beware. Oh, no, there we go. For like a split second, it faced the right way. Oh, my gosh. I am so bad at this. Oh, there we go. That's a good picture. The Pokefinder can be pretty fun, but most of the time, for some reason, just Pokemon are not facing the right way for me. And I don't know if maybe there's a way you can actually get them to turn around or something. I feel like there has to be at this point. Uh, but we're going to smash a couple more Tauros rocks, get ourselves a Zygarde cell, and already we've got to get back on Tauros. Oh no, there's not enough space. Okay, maybe we don't need Tauros after all, but I just love smashing me some rocks, so let's go. Let's keep going. Smash all the rocks. Oh no, a uh, couple of trainers. We want even more stronger rivals. My Pokemon and my both cry out loud. I was not expecting these guys to uh, surprise us like that with a battle, but here we go. We're going to take on Honeymooners, Noriko, and Devin. I like the Sight Steers, not just because they usually have Kanto Pokemon, uh, but they're just cool in their design. I like, like the dress of the girl and the outfit of the guy, how he's actually holding a phone. It's pretty sick, but this is going to be a double battle, of course, against two Alolan Pokemon in their Kanto forms, I guess. Hopefully the Sand Slash doesn't go for anything too crazy, like an Earthquake. I don't think he would, though, because that would probably kill his Ninetales as well. Um, but yeah, before this generation, they were just pretty much Sand Slash and Ninetales. But now they're like regular Sand Slash and Ninetales because they're not Alolan forms. I don't really know. I guess you could just call them the Kanto form. So this is Kanto Slash or Kantoin. How do you say that? Kantoin? Kind of like the other form of Alolan. 
Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, I wanted to show off the fact that I did get Earthquake on El Tigre, and that is definitely going to hit up everybody here on the field, but it would also kind of kill Puka, so I think I'm going to bring out Ronda here, and I think Ronda can probably take a hit from the Earthquake, but last episode, we also got that TM, I think from the Pony Meadow, so definitely check that out if you've been looking for the Earthquake TM, because I know I've been looking for it for quite a long time, and now we finally got it, so here we go. Nine Tails is about to go down. Sand Slash actually not going to take very much damage at all, but it's okay because he's not really hitting us with anything right now. Unless he's about to hit us. Oh man, I don't know what this Sand Slash is about to go for actually. I think he's probably about to attack, unless he already attacked this turn. I don't remember, but level 38 on Grimace. I think he's only one level away from evolving now, and as I suspected, he had not attacked yet. He's going for the Sandstorm though. So I don't know what's up with that dude. You went for the Swords Dance. You're powered up, you could probably take out any one of our Pokemon, but instead, he goes for the Sandstorm. Just, I will never understand. But, an Executor is going to be the next Pokemon for this Sightseer, and that is pretty awesome. Not only because we can, of course, Flare Blitz it, but because it's just the regular form of Executor. I feel like I haven't seen it in a while. I've been getting a little bit too used to that Alolan Executor with the big old neck, or I guess long neck. Big neck and long neck, is it the same thing? I don't know, I think a big neck would be like really thick. I don't know why I'm thinking about thick necks right now. This is kind of weird, but <laughs> the Sand Slash gets taken down there. And now, will the Flare Blitz one-shot the Executor? I believe so, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Nice stuff, LT Gray. And I don't get why these people in double battles keep on insisting on bringing out the weather. Like, I think the last double battle we had, the lady had hail. Uh, and now we have Sandstorm going on. So it's just like making the battle even laggier when it's already a little bit laggy in the double battle, of course. Uh, but... I've kind of learned to tolerate it, I've learned that it's part of Sun and Moon, and we can't really do too much about it, so... I don't know, you just gotta put up with it a little bit. Last Pokemon is going to be Golem, though, and I don't know if this thing actually has Sturdy or not, so... I'm just gonna go ahead and attack them both, or attack with both of our Pokemon. The Trap Kick, first of all, and it does have the Sturdy, of course! It's okay, though, because we did go for Darkest Lariat, so... This guy is definitely going to go down here, especially because El Tigre was faster, so finish him off, bruh. Hit up that bowling ball. That actually kind of looked like a reverse bowling for a second, like El Tigre is the ball, the bowling ball, and then Golem is the single pin, and he got definitely knocked down there. Even going to give El Tigre the level 60, and apparently we're learning Outrage as well. What an Outrage! Okay, that was kind of lame, but since I did just give El Tigre U-turn, I guess we'll go ahead and get rid of it because Outrage does seem like a pretty awesome attack. And that is going to be it for this battle, Grimace level 40. I think Grimace is for sure going to be evolving after this battle here then because I believe Alolan Muck evolves at level 39. And man, oh man, we have gotten a lot of levels already in this episode. Thank you for showing the strength I was looking for. We've discovered a cluster of talent in the Alola region. Hey, buddy. I'm not a cluster, okay? Anyway, Grimace is going to be evolving, as I mentioned, and that is awesome because it's going to be another Alolan form to be added to the decks here. One of the only ones that you actually can't catch in the wild because we can catch a lot of higher level wild Pokemon in this game, but Alolan Muck is definitely not one of them, but now we've got it. And that is, of course, another one for the Pokedex. Get that nice and registered. Hold on a second, is Grimer winking right there? Because that looks like a wink if I've ever seen one, and that is pretty cute if it is. But there it is, the Alolan Muck. The garbage it eats causes continuous chemical changes in its body, which produces its exceedingly vivid coloration. As you guys can see, one really awesome thing about Alolan Muck I like is how the colors kind of shift every once in a while. Oh, there it is. Looks so awesome, but that is Alolan Muck. And that begs the question, what Alolan Pokemon will we train up next? I'm not really sure, but for now, let's pick up another Zygarde cell, and oh snap, it's a wild Pokemon! Well, let's continue, shall we? I think over here we haven't quite been, and there's no items apparently. I feel like there's a hidden item in that corner, and I just couldn't find it, but hey, there's definitely a not so hidden item here in Dark Pulse. And that would be kind of good, but El Tigre is more of a physical attacker, plus Darkest Lariat does have our exclusive Z move, so I don't think I'll ever really quite replace that move, but either way, we pretty much smashed all the rocks here, and yep, we did leave an item behind, a little Stardust. I remember seeing that when we smashed that rock, but uh, should we go this way or this way? I guess to the left there's just an item, a Comet Shard, and I guess that is it. The Pony Coast was actually quite short, only two trainers and it was a double battle, so 
let's move along finally to the Pony Gauntlet. And already we've got a familiar face here to greet us. Oh, you're the one from the great composition. I just did a hundred scratches, so now I'm taking a break. I meet all the trainers around here too, so now I'm totally bored again. I wish there was someone to go all out against. That's it, Orange. If you can beat all the trainers around here too, I'll give you a battle against me. Alright, Mina, that sounds like a challenge, but unfortunately... Oh, I was about to say I don't think I'm quite ready, but I guess we're as ready as we'll ever be because... This guy knows a lot about Pokemon, and he's going to use that knowledge in battle against us. I don't know how far your knowledge goes though, bro, because I seem to have something called luck on my side, and it's a little bit more powerful than any Pokemon skill or knowledge you could have, but his first Pokemon is going to be a Ditto, and I do have Sarah still up first, healed up our Pokemon, so... Thankfully, if it doesn't transform quicker than us, we can get off a critical, well not a critical hit, but a super effective hit here. Nice, it doesn't transform quite yet, so ditto, you don't even get a chance to transform, buddy. I am so sorry, but that is it for you. Oh, it looked pretty cute there when it was fainting. I don't know how I find fainting Pokemon cute, you know, it's kind of messed up, I guess. They're literally fainting, like... Like, we beat the crap out of them, and I'm laughing at it. I don't know, it's kind of sadistic. But either way, Porygon Z is going to be this guy's other Pokemon, and that can just as easily die to a Sky Uppercut, because it is definitely still a normal type. What the heck is a lock-on? I don't think I've seen that attack. Well, I've definitely seen it before, like on Magnezone, I think, but not in Generation 7. It actually looked pretty cool. Somehow this thing survived with 1 HP, though. Like, I seriously don't know if some of these Pokemon do all have a Magic Focus Sash sometimes, or if it's maybe like the affection, you know, our Pokemon seem to survive with 1 HP a lot with the affection, so maybe that's how it is for every single trainer in the story mode. I don't think so though, I think they literally just get that lucky and somehow live with one health, but what the heck is a Magic Coat, dude? I don't think I know what Magic Coat does, but it definitely doesn't help you live, and that is it for that Porygon Z. Nice, more experience for our team, Grimace is gonna keep on gaining them levels, and that is it for Scientist Kyle. His glasses somehow broken that battle? Or were they broken from the start? I wasn't really paying attention, but... <clears throat> Here's another Zygarde cell, and I think this is actually a dead end. Yeah, trainer tips. Rumor has it there are some special Z-moves that only certain Pokemon can use. Oh, you mean like the Decidium Z that we've got? Or is it Decidium? No, wait, that's for uh, Decidueye. What am I saying? We've got the Incinium Z for Incineroar. I think we also got the Primarinium Z, or however that's called. Uh, for Primarina, from Hau. I wasn't expecting to get all three of them, but I'm pretty sure we got all three, or I guess the two that we were missing. Anyway, Veteran here, whatever her name is, has got a Weavile, one of my favorite Pokemon, and one that is definitely going to kill us here because we have gotten paralyzed. Oh well, it's a little bit too late now, so here we go, Weavile. Hit me with your best shot. That was not really your best shot, dude. I have a feeling you've got a little better than that, so here you go. Let me show you what I mean by hit me with your best shot. That's what I mean, bro. I meant take me down in one hit. Unfortunately, this little Weavile, if it would have been mine, maybe it would have done better, but this veteran, not quite using the Weavile how I would have expected. And by that I mean using anything other than Snatch, pretty much. But Como-O is going to be coming out next, and I've got a special surprise for that. It's called uh, the Ice Fabby. <laughs> pretty much every Dragon type cowers in fear when they see Alola Ninetales. It's like both of its typings are good against Dragon Pokemon. It's crazy, and I really like it, actually. Ice Fairy is such an awesome combination. Maybe not exactly against Komo-O, but... Oh, actually, she kind of realized that. Wow! Maybe this veteran is actually hearing what I'm saying. Maybe she got offended. The point is, this lady actually switched out. It almost felt like she was listening to us, but obviously that's not really happening. I guess her final Pokemon is going to be Trevenant. And who do I want to bring out against this thing? You know what, Grimace? You've been chilling in our party for a little bit now, and I didn't really plan on using you in battle, but maybe this is actually our perfect chance to finally try out Grimace here, as the Trevenant goes for the Phantom Force. And I certainly hope we're slower than it. Nice, we are slower. Oh my gosh! Grimace, even avoiding that. Awesome stuff. We can finish it off with the Crunch there. Nice. I really like Alolan Muck, actually, in battle. It looks pretty cool with all those chunks of rocks or crystals and stuff on its back there. I don't actually know what those are, I think it's just like solidified poison or something like that is what the Pokedex says, but either way, the Magmortar is coming back out here. And you know what, to be honest, I kind of like having Grimace out here, he looks really cool. I don't know, just the way that his uh, body works, like the way the color keeps on oozing down, it looks really awesome. But, oh my god, 
surviving the fire blast even. That is insane. I don't think this gunk shot will kill it, but it's definitely gonna... Oh! Holy moly, Grimace. You are too good. That was just too good. Come on. That chain of events right there was just insane. We got a critical hit. And then before that, I think we avoided two attacks or somehow survived the attacks. I don't even know, man. That was that was just crazy stuff right there. So good stuff to Grimace. Living it out, toughing it out for us and getting level 44 already. Probably going to get 45 after this battle. So to be honest, if Grimace keeps doing this well, I might just think about adding in Grimace to the team instead of uh, P-Hat. But I guess that would give us two dark type Pokemon and also another weakness to uh, ground type still. Like our team is definitely super weak to ground Pokemon. And I don't know why the heck I went for Psy Shock there. I meant to go for Dazzling Gleam, which would have been four times super effective, of course. But the Como O decides to Dragon Dance. Okay. I don't know, actually. That might make him faster than us now. I just don't think it's got anything to hit us with. So let's see. Noble Roar. Oh gosh, I don't even know what that does. I feel like it's going to get us out of the battle, though. But never mind. Just lowers attack and special attack. Why do all these Pokemon set up? like Swords Dance or whatever other setup move, and then not hit us. I just don't get it. Ha, huh, I don't know, but level 45 there, level 61 there, and that is it for veteran Sherry. This was kind of a dead end though, so I'm curious where we're supposed to go then. Oh, I guess there's grass over here. And I'm thinking about it now, I really wanted to get done with the whole Pony Gauntlet in this episode, but now I'm not quite so sure we're gonna be able to finish it off. Um, I don't know, there's quite a lot of trainers here, plus there's Mina, who I've now found out we can battle after all this. So, let's see, we've got another Gumshoes. I'm getting real sick and tired of you, you know? And let's move on, because I do see a Backpacker over here, if that is her trainer class. I'm a self-seeking Backpacker. I savor each day as it comes. I guess today will be a battle with you. Wow, I like how she even acknowledged the fact that she's a Backpacker before we even get into battle, because it's about to tell us anyway. This is Backpacker, yu ho with just one Pokemon. Oh my gosh, I've just realized her name is Yuho. <laughs> or is it Yuho? Yuho? Like the H is silent? Because if the H isn't silent, then her name is literally Yuho. Um, don't know about that one, but Mimikyu is her Pokemon, and this thing is not, definitely not something that Sarah can do anything to even. So yeah, this is kind of crazy, but the Alolan Muck has really worked out this episode. Going for another gunk shot here. And, oh, I forgot Mimikyu does have that ability, but somehow we get it poisoned. That is pretty crazy that we got the poison off there. I thought that maybe Disguise wouldn't let you get poisoned, but I'm thinking of Shields Down, which is the ability of uh, Minior, the little Meteor Pokemon. It's all good, though. Nothing a little Hyper Potion can't patch up. And he actually decides to go for the Hone Claws for his final attack. I think this Mimikyu knows that his days are numbered, and the Poison Fang will finish him off there. Holy crap, guys. Grimace, the surprise hero of today's episode. I really, really like this Alolan Muck, just because of all the colors it's got going on, and the Acid Armor. I think I'm okay without that. But that is it for Backpacker Yuho here. Never mind, Ronda gonna gain a level. Kurama gaining a level. And this is the taste of defeat. Tastes salty. Alright then, let's keep moving along. I hope I didn't really miss, miss any items because I feel like I might have, but... Oh man, there's a Black Belt over there. I'm a little bit scared to take him on, so let me get this Misty Seed first, which I really don't know what that does actually, but... Oh, what the heck? Some punks? All I can do is get psyched against an opponent I can't beat even after I've trained myself up. I'd go anywhere to be extreme. Check out how us bad dudes do it. How us bad dudes do it. Um, that maybe wasn't the best choice of words there, bro, but Punk Pair, Marie, and Troy, I think was the guy's name. Yeah, Troy. That's pretty awesome, man. I would love to be part of a punk couple. Too bad I'm never going to be a part of any couple in general. But they've got a Honchkrow and a Lycanroc, I believe. So yeah, this is actually perfect for us. Puka can take on the Honchkrow. Sarah can definitely take on the Lycanroc. And I am really hungry. I've just realized. I know I say this a lot during episodes, but for some reason recording really makes me hungry. Maybe it like actually takes up energy, like talking so much or focusing on the game. I don't know, but I always get hungry after I record. So usually it like, basically the way that it goes is like I wake up, I'll uh, mess around for a little bit on the computer, go on Reddit, watch some YouTube videos, and then eventually, once I'm done being lazy for that morning, I will get to recording a video for the day, 
which in today's case is this video you're watching right now. And then pretty much right after I'm done recording, I'll go chow down, get myself some lunch while I edit the video. It's a pretty good uh, cycle I think I've got going on here, but um, it means I pretty much am always hungry when I end off recording videos because I guess it became a habit now that I get hungry. I don't know if you can really make a habit out of being hungry though, because I'm kind of hungry all the time, but we take down the Lycan Rock. And that is it for this former Team Skull couple here. Pretty awesome though. I really like seeing the Team Skull people as punks, I guess. Even though they have a different trainer class, but you may be strong, but there's nothing good or bad about ya. Anyway, this is gonna lead us over to this item, which is a big pearl. And I've also noticed a little fishing spot over here, so let's try our luck. Usually the bubbling fishing spots have at least one rare Pokemon that isn't in any other area, so let's see if we can get it here on the first try, maybe. Well, I guess second try, because the first try, nothing seems to be biting. Once again, nothing seems to be biting. But come on, third time's a charm, I believe. Yes! There we go. What have we reeled in? Hopefully not a Magikarp, but knowing my luck, it's probably Magikarp. The bane of my existence has been caught. I went ahead and added that Magikarp to our party in exchange for Grimace because I kind of want to get ourselves a Gyarados and I feel like we're probably going to gain that level that we need right from this black belt here. Our final battle for today. To be the strongest is an unfulfilled dream, but you must press on to get closer to it. Alright man, I don't know what the heck you just said, but how about you show me instead? I'm kind of a visual learner myself. You know, in school, I wouldn't really get things until the teacher drew a picture of it basically. I, I think that's what being a visual learner means, right? No, I've been being lied to my whole life. Okay, anyway, Pangoro is going to be his first Pokemon, and this thing is a dark fighting type, so definitely going to be weak to our Sky Uppercut here, but to be honest, I don't know how much damage it's going to do. Sometimes when I go for the Sky Uppercuts, it like destroys Pokemon, and sometimes it, well, actually that did pretty good. Oh, he's got a Sky Uppercut of his own. Holy crap. All right, his thankfully doesn't do quite as much damage, so we can just uh, pick up the scraps here with a Dragon Claw. And I don't think that's going to be quite enough for our Magikarp there, but we're definitely going to gain some good experience. And Machamp is going to be his second Pokemon. Uh, I don't know if Puka can really beat this with one Psychic here, but I think probably. I hope that she does at least because we've only got 40 HP left. So if we don't take this Machamp out in one hit, Puka is probably going to go down here. So come on, I believe in the power of the Puka. And here we go. Oh my gosh, barely didn't take it out. Oh, come on, man. All right, well, the cross chop. Ooh, Puka is going to toughen it out. You know, I did kind of forget about that. I was like, there is that off chance that we can toughen it out, but I wasn't counting on it because I never count on that. But we still somehow seem to get it almost every time. And the Machamp is going to go down. Will we get the level up? No, the Magikarp doesn't quite level up. So sad. But it's okay, at least we took down that trainer, and oh, it looks like there's actually still one more trainer before the end, before we reach the battle tree you can see in the background there, but I battle every day. There's no one who can match me in that. Well, let's see if that's true or not in the next episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon.